Hi, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a plant growing series entitled Growing Lemon Trees from Seeds. It's day zero, January 2020 in Southern California, San Diego. So this is a reboot of a lemon growing series with the same name from four years ago. It's my second attempt. I decided not to change the way I named these. I'll even put this in the same playlist. So if anyone watches that first failed series, they can perhaps move on to this if they're still interested. So I'm sure you're all familiar with how lemon seeds look. I did use this for juice later on, but for demonstration purposes, I extracted all the seeds. So there's quite a bit of them, um, maybe 15 or so. So that's about as much as you can get out of a lemon. And I decided to pick the five most robust ones for planting. So some of them are very small and hence uh, I wouldn't try using those. They don't have much in the way of energy reserves. So the first thing I did was use paper towels to rub off most of the pulp. I don't think it's that imperative to get them completely sterile and clean on the outside. I decided to do a partial peeling of the seed coats to speed up germination. Uh, from my first experience I did learn that it's quite a pain to peel off the seed coat entirely and that might even run the risk of causing some damage but I figured that with a partial peeling I could get water to go in faster and get them to germinate faster. I made my own planters with drainage holes out of dual soft plastic trash cans. These are rubber made trash cans. First thing I did was wipe off the labels because I don't want that to rot and get all moldy and uh, leach out some residue later on. It's just a personal preference, although I'm sure I would have managed with those labels there. So I drilled some holes, eight small holes on the long bottom, and for the outer trash can, four large drainage holes also for air to get in to the bottom so the root system can breathe a little better and I can drain the pots from any side. So these are soft plastic trash cans. They're very nice and soft to the touch, but I don't think one alone is going to be able to handle the kind of growing medium that I'm going to prepare and show you. So I'm obtaining clay soil from the local hills. It's about 400 plus feet elevation in San Diego, California. So we have a lot of this red clay soil in the hills. It's very fine. I actually recommend coming a few days after it's rained because the red clay soil doesn't fly up as dust and get in your lungs. That way you don't need to use a filtration mask. So I'm mixing 75% washed clay sand with 25% clay soil. It's filtered. So this is by volume. So just use the same container or cup to measure out three parts of this uh, pre-washed clay sand and 25% of your volume will be this filtered clay soil. So clay particles are much smaller. They'll fit between the spaces created uh, between sand grains. And if your clay percentage is too high, say above 40%, then the whole thing is going to congeal together like a brick and you won't get the permeability you need in terms of oxygen to the root system and also for water. That's what the final composition looks like. Of course, I don't know the exact percentage composition of the clay soil I dug up. And I'm just showing you an example here of what happens when you grow large and heavy plants in wood chips or potting mix, which seems to be an industry standard. And these cement planters do have drainage holes on the bottom. And some of them even appear to have uh, air pipes to get more aeration down there. But that's definitely not an ideal situation. It's not aesthetic. It probably spawns uh, millions of bugs every day. So these are my five seeds. It's finally time to plant them. After all that prep work, it was a lot of hard work, but I believe the soil mix will pay off. So I'm going to plant them sort of a cross pattern. I don't want to get too close to the edges where light could be an issue. The aeration is different. Uh, the roots could crawl along the edges and dry out or be disturbed when I'm lifting the pots or spinning them around for filming purposes mostly. So um, I'm just going about half an inch deep. 
uh, maybe one to two centimeters deep and I'm planting these in in no particular orientation because they are slippery seeds and I don't think it matters that much the root system and shoot system will find its way to be in the proper orientation soon enough so I'm compacting the sand soil mixture and I use plastic wrap to preserve moisture in the top layer of soil mix until the seeds germinate so I wonder how long this will take so it's day 20 so of course germination did occur slightly earlier but after 20 days of 72 to 74 Fahrenheit or 22 to 23 Celsius this is what they look like there's three seedlings the largest one has been facing furthest away from the large glass sliding door to the left of what you're looking at and to the right is more towards the living room area where there's more warmth from my computer and the refrigerator the oven and the rest of the apartment complex so it makes perfect sense although two didn't germinate I wonder why that is um, but sometimes that's just what you get but for the three that did they're in a straight line and they're in a height gradient which is very interesting and I do believe that higher temperatures definitely help although you wouldn't want to go over 30 Celsius I believe um, too high of a temperature is not optimal for root development and it would never get that hot underground in the wild anyway but if you have something in the 80s in Fahrenheit or 70s uh, that's a pretty quick rate of germination so I'm just going to spray some distilled water here so the reason I'm doing this is because the top layer of sand and soil mixture is of course the first to dry out and if any of these smaller seedlings or the two ungerminated seeds don't have deep enough roots then they're just going to dehydrate so it's day 23 three days later still have only three seedlings a small one looks deformed although I'm quite intrigued as to what it's gonna look like within a few weeks and this middle one isn't quite doing that well either in terms of uh, leaf morphology as opposed to this one so this is the eldest the first mover and I'm surprised the one in the middle isn't doing better since it has the best positioning but this bigger one was in the warmest spot so it's day 33 I move my seedlings outdoors onto the balcony near the rail after day 23 to get sunlight because I don't have enough light indoors it's just fluorescent light which is for all purposes close to nighttime for a plant so unfortunately this move exposed my seedlings to the cold nights of February where it gets into the 50s or 60s in Fahrenheit. So that's quite cold. Um, that's well below 20 Celsius. You know, it's probably in the 15 Celsius, in the, in the low teens in terms of Celsius. So that's obviously going to inhibit the growth of these plants. It's going to be quite of a shock and I'm spray watering because uh, they're going to dry out maybe even faster with the sun striking on them in the morning and all this wind even though it's cold wind can be quite dry here in San Diego so on day 41 I found that all five seeds germinated two of the three eldest look very healthy now this one that looked deformed in the beginning looks quite nice it has uh, maybe seven leaves and some weird uh, appendage or residual thingamajig on the bottom two of them in fact so uh, maybe those can develop later but it's an interesting seedling and the two that came up the latest um, they look very small and deformed but maybe that could change after a few weeks of good care if they don't dry out so this middle seedling is uh, somewhat deformed in its foliage and orientation it's quite a surprise that the middle one isn't doing that well but this is all part of why I have five seedlings if something goes wrong at least in this case I still have two that look very robust and pretty so that looks like it's not doing that great it's a very late mover and this looks like uh, a seedling that just can't find its orientation or something or it's still coming out so I'll have to continue to spray some water on top to make sure those underdeveloped late comer seedlings uh, get an equal chance 
Um, I'm sure the three seedlings that are already established have roots that go probably two-thirds of the way deep, if not all the way to the bottom already. I prepared a squirt bottle full of miracle Grow chemical fertilizer. I followed the instructions. They have a scoop in there that has a two ends, a small scoop and a large scoop, and they have volume. So I, I did the calculations according to what they recommend for outdoor plants, which is uh, a large scoop that's flat for maybe a gallon of water. So I had that to scale that down for this small squirt bottle, obviously. And the solution inside uh, looks very dark blue. It's a beautiful navy blue, but uh, it is considerably darker than what I've used before. So um, since I took the care to do all the calculations and math and carefully measure everything out, I think this is maybe more to the plant's liking for outdoor plants, even though these don't get eight hours of full sun a day or anything close, they get more like maybe three or four hours of morning sunlight, which is the weaker kind in terms of intensity and warmth, I believe. So I'm um, spraying to wash off the fertilizer, if any of it, sprinkle back onto the undersides of the leaves, the stems. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to have fertilizer burns on the leaves. Although I don't think that's uh, ever really been a problem. I'd like to just make sure that everything's all uh, neat and proper to start with. So it's day 47. The growth is still slow due to the cold weather, I believe. It's early March 2020. This uh, plant that once looked deformed is looking better and better. It has the greatest number of leaves. It's very interesting. I didn't expect them, the uh, first three, to develop in such different ways. This middle one looks a little bit better now. And um, it looks like the tip of the leaf for one of these uh, latecomers is a little burned. We did have Santa Ana winds, which are these uh, compressed winds that go through the valleys from the high deserts and for a while there we had very low humidities and very very strong winds so maybe the two latecomers got dried out so I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't survive but I think the conditions are good enough to where they might have a good chance of surviving but I'm plenty content with having the three seedlings I have now they're looking pretty good if you look at the leaves closely in 4K resolution, you'll see what appear to be tiny little blisters embedded in the leaves. That reminds me of this seedless navel orange growing series that I had many years ago. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I got two seeds out of maybe 50 navel oranges that I ate. And I germinated them and up close zoomed in with optical zoom. I could see these little blisters on the edges of the leaves. So this reminds me of that. I don't know if there's any significance at all, but I'm off to a pretty good start. So I think this series should be quite promising compared to the last one. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for an update.